Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk to you about urban sketching supplies. Um, I realise you've probably seen a few, well hopefully you've seen a few of my videos where um, I have been sort of showing you my um, process or how to sketch certain things or just like an over the shoulder kind of peek of me um, urban sketching but I thought it'd be nice for you um, all to kind of see my face a bit more and um, maybe we could talk through some of my urban sketching supplies. Um, as some of you may uh, be aware, <clears throat> I run um, a website and blog um, called urbansketchingworld.com um, which I hope you've visited, if not, go check it out. Um, and over there you'll find loads of kind of tutorials and inspiration um, about various different aspects of urban sketching. Um, I'm really passionate about sort of travel sketching, sketching on location, urban sketching, sketching of any description really. Um, and I've got really sort of more into the watercolour side of things now too, where I've kind of, you might have seen my Skillshare video where I've tried to uh, see if I can learn sort of more traditional kind of ways of watercolour painting. Um, so it's it's just a huge passion of mine and I'm just, my, my main mission here is just to try and share as much information as I can um, to help you guys uh, maybe shortcut some of the, the time it took me to get to know certain techniques or learn about certain supplies or whatever it is. So um, I hope that you've been enjoying the content I've been putting out so far um, and I hope this video is interesting to you. Um, the other thing I will say is that um, I do have a book, I've just released it, no pressure whatsoever, but um, do check out my description below, you might find it interesting, it's just all of my, well not all of, but an edited selection of my travel illustrations from the last three years of my travels. I've been su super lucky to have visited um, amazing countries such as Iran and South Sudan, South Africa um, and a whole bunch of others. Um, so it's um, a look at my sketches as I said from the last three years, um, 2017 to 2020, right up to the current time where we're kind of, uh, I don't, I don't want to use the word stuck but we're kind of in this lockdown situation which is starting to ease up a bit now for most of us which is nice. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, so my book is of um, all of those sketches, 15 different countries over four different continents. So I'm sure if you're into sketching, travel sketching, uh, checking out illustrations, supporting your local artist or your local worldwide artist, um, then I think you, know, you might find something interesting there. So check out the description below. I do have a discount code. Um, which is active until the 1st of September. So uh, for 20% off, use USK World at checkout. Okay, self-promotion done. Um, let's talk about urban sketching stuff. So the first thing I'm going to talk about um, is sketchbooks. So at the moment I am using a moleskin. So I think it's described as the large, um, but it's kind of an A5 size. Um, for those of you that work in inches, I think it's like eight by five-ish, that kind of size. Um, and it's the landscape orientation, so it opens up that way so you can get some super wide sketches in. So um, let me see here. Some of these sketches are in my book. This is when I visited South Sudan. So you can see because of this orientation, you can get a nice wide, um, uh, sketch which is quite fun to play with so I'm going to back away a little bit so you guys can see that but there's uh, some of you might recognize that there's Big Ben there um, I went through a bit of a phase of drawing some London landmarks which you can see my YouTube videos on actually of how I did those so there's uh, Tower Bridge so it's cool it's a cool um, orientation to play with um, because obviously you can sketch across the pages either this way or that way um, and almost from the start actually I've kind of always sketched in this kind of orientation it just feels quite natural especially when you're um, predominantly sketching like buildings and landscapes and stuff like that um, but I, saying that I do I'm really keen to get a sketchbook that's in portrait um, 
you know, so it opens up that way, portrait orientation. Um, and I do believe in the last couple of years, Moleskine have actually started to make this size in a portrait orientation, because I think a lot of people were asking for, th for that. Um, I started off ex sort of mainly using Moleskins just because they were really available to me um, and they're a good price. Um, so I would just get them off of Amazon. Um, but I'd switched over to sort of trying out some other brands. So I had um, a Stillman & Burn, um, I think it was the Zeta series, um, and it was this, exactly the same size and orientation as this. And I absolutely loved sketching in that. Most of the sketches I did in Australia um, and a lot of the ones in South Africa and Mexico um, that I did that you might see on Instagram are done in that sketchbook. Um, and as a result, actually, when I was in Australia, I found a Stillman & Byrne um, sketchbook, um, a bigger one um, of the Beta series. Um, but unfortunately, long story short, I left that sketchbook in the UK um, because I only had a very small bag to travel to South Sudan with um, and I had every intention of going back to the UK after South Sudan. So I left, basically left everything there apart from this sketchbook and my watercolours and a couple of pens which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but something called COVID-19 happened and the world's borders started to lock down. Um, and my other half, my boyfriend, um, he actually lives in South Africa, so I had to change a lot of travel plans, but I eventually just ended up coming to South Africa after South Sudan rather than back to the UK. Therefore, I have less um, of my things here with me. But uh, such is life. I've found the art supply stores here, so, you know, I'm kind of building a collection again. But unfortunately, you can't get um, Stillman and Burn uh, sketchbooks in here in South Africa. Um, but there are there are other brands to play with. There's um, the Germ I think German brand Hanna Müller, which I have not tried yet, but they're on my radar to try next. But what I would say is um, these moleskins are great. They're not too expensive, so you don't feel too precious about them. They're a great size to carry around, which is why I took this one with me to South Sudan. Um, it fit very nicely in my small shoulder bag. Um, and you can't really go wrong. People do complain about the paper a bit, and I do, when I first started using it again, because I hadn't used one for a little while, I was like, oh, you know, they're not the best um, to take, like, um, watercolour in. And sometimes, I don't know what it is, but sometimes the page is a bit resistant to watercolour, so it ends up creating some weird textures that are not intentional, but sometimes look cool. I'm just trying to find that Big Ben sketch because that is a prime example. So some of, a lot of this texture here that I did, some of it actually was just because of the paper. Um, so you know if you're going to try and sort of learn proper watercolour and you're like very um, tied to the result of how your watercolour comes out then this might not be the book for you. I would suggest actually purchasing proper watercolour paper. Um, for example when I'm here at home um, I've never tried this paper before, so I um, got um, one of these pads, which is a Canson watercolour, and I actually really like it. Um, so I did the Blackfriars Pub illustration on there. I've got a video on, on this sketch. Um, yeah, I I like this paper, and it's a bit, it's um, also nice to work, work, work in a bigger size as well. So this is A4, um, so roughly about eight. 8 by 11 I've got a video on this sketch as well, 8 by 11 inches. Um, and so, and I did actually go for a full just watercolour, no, no sketching or anything um, uh, attempt there. And even though, you know, it does, it does wrinkle a bit, but it's totally fine. So something like this would be better to, to learn actual full-on watercolours. Um, but if you just want a sketchbook to just bum around with while you're urban sketching that you don't, you know, don't care too much about then the moleskin's perfect um, and just for interest this is not really to do with urban sketching but I've bought finally bought some arches paper um, which is pretty expensive um, but this is great for commissions so I've actually got the green one which is cold press and it's like quite textured so um, I think the smoother the pink one the hot press the smoother one is better for my sort of illustration style 
So same deal with the watercolours. Um, I left for South Sudan with the minimal amount of uh, stuff I could get away with to sketch with. So at home I have a, a, a larger box, so like double the, double the length of this, which has like um, Windsor and Nita watercolours, um, the professional ones, and some Daniel Smith colours, some of Jackson's own brand in there. So poured from tubes into the into the plastic pan, but I bought this um, set um, directly from Saint Petersburg White Knights, um, uh, which you can you can, in the UK you can buy directly from them, but uh, you can also buy them from Jackson's Art, and I think um, on Amazon as well you can buy not this exact set; they're more the plastic box sets, but. Um, uh, this was called the Urban Sketcher, the 14 pan Urban Sketcher set. So um, you can see it's a bit of a mess, but but it's actually, um, it's fantastic. The reason I went for this brand, well, because it's in a nice compact tin, it's 14 full pan colours, as you can see. So full pans there, squished in a bit, but um, the reason I got this set is because of um, seeing Alicia Aradia's work and she pretty much exclusively seems to use um, St. Petersburg White Knights um, paints and they, um, they're they great, they're so, they're so bright. I did like a little um, kind of, that's my sketching stuff that I was using for this sketchbook when I went away. So you can see they're quite vibrant colours. Um, and they are, I think they're pro professional artist grade paints as well, and they're, they're really good price. They're like the same price as student grade paints, but they are apparently, I, I'm pretty sure they are professional grade paints. So would highly recommend trying out St. Petersburg um, White Knights watercolours. In terms of um, brushes, um, again, I travelled fairly light to South Sudan. Um, and I have got these Escoda um, brushes. They were quite a bit of an investment, but um, I think it was last year. I think it was last year. I, I was like getting, you know, I'd been really into urban sketching for so, you know, quite a long time, and I was like, I think it's time to sort of invest in, you know, some really <clears throat> nice pieces of equipment, you know. So I got these um, Escoda brushes. They're the Reserva. Um, range. I'm just kind of look for the other one. I think it's here somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I bought the three. I bought them from Jackson Jackson's Art for those of you in the UK. But I th I have a feeling you can get them on Amazon as well. I think I've linked to them below. Um, or you know, probably um, an art store near you probably stock them. Um, but what's great about them is that they are travel brushes. So they actually, that's the handle and that's the brush part. So they actually come apart in the middle and then the brush turns around. You just got to be careful not to go, go get all the hairs in there. But anyway, and then you can insert it in the middle like that. And then you can carry them around without worrying about messing up your brushes. So I think it was quite a clever um, contraption. So I've got the size 10, which is quite a big one. I think it goes up to 12, but 10 is definitely like big enough to cover the moleskin, you know, paper. Um, and then this one has rubbed off, but I'm fairly certain this was a six. So like a medium kind of brush. I don't know if you can see that. And then I've got the two as well. So I kind of went for like a, a fine, a medium and like quite a big. So the, the, the 10, the six and the two have been a really good investment um, for me. Um, and they seem to be the right sizes for what I need. Um, the other brush, the other brush that I've got that I absolutely love is this uh, Rosemary & Co dagger brush. So you can see it's kind of got that dagger shape. I don't know if I'm doing a good job of this or not. Um, and it's also a travel brush as well. So you can put it in there. 
So, um, so yeah, Rosemary & Co. I think it only comes in one size um, for the travel brush version, but you can just get a normal version as well, just a normal brush. Um, and um, they're a UK-based company, but I'm fairly certain they ship all over the world. Um, and I think it's a blend as well. I think the... I, I can't quite remember, but I think these Reserva brushes are actually... I want to say they're natural hair, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, and this is a blend between synthetic and natural hair. Um, and then the other brush that I've been that I just bought super cheap in the art store the other day that I've been really enjoying using is just a flat, um, a flat brush. So you might have seen me talking, mentioning that in my um, uh, my most recent video before this. Um, and I'm finding it really useful to um, uh, paint like buildings with and stuff for sharp edges. It's it's excellent. So this is just a super cheap one. I just got any old one. This is called a Dela Gold, and apparently it's a size 14. So of course the other things that um, I use for urban sketching are pencils. Not the most interesting of items, admittedly. Um, there's obviously your normal wooden pencil, um, but I actually much prefer using a mechanical pencil. It's just easier, you don't have to worry about sharpening it. It has a little eraser on the end. Um, and I've just got a couple of these. You can um, refill them as well. So yeah, that would be that would be my go-to for um, urban sketching. The reason I, d I did actually get a couple of just normal pencils the other day is because of um, working with paper such as the arches and doing kind of commissions and stuff. Um, the mechanical pencils are quite can be quite sharp, um, and especially on textured paper, they're just they can be a bit not so great to use. So I just got some softer like four B kind of wooden pencils to do that. But for urban sketching, mechanical pencil is my favorite. Um, and then also I have just like a kneadable gray eraser. It just seems to, doesn't erase quite so much as maybe the white plasticky ones in my mind, but it doesn't seem to ruin the, the paper as much. So like the watercolor paper. So that's, that's obviously better. Um, and then, Moving on to pens, um, I generally use um, fine liners quite a lot, especially if I'm traveling light um, or for quite a long time, I tend to just take fine liners with me. So I just use whatever I can find. So I've got, um, I quite like uni pins, quite like those, um, microns um, are popular choices. And then um, I've got these Copics, um, just because that was all that was in the shop. The Microns had sold out, so it's like, I'll try a Copic. And guess what? They're exactly the same, so it's fine. Um, so I have different um, widths. So I've got a 0.1, a 0.2, a 0.3, and a 0.7 here. So, but, you know, as long as I've got, like, one fine one, one medium one, and perhaps a thicker one. Not so bothered about the thicker one, but um, that's fine. Um, and then the other the other one I really like is the um, Pigma. I don't know if you can read this. I'm sorry. Um, is like the Ping, Pigma brush pen. Um, so it's just like a black brush pen, and it's um, super useful just to kind of fill in larger areas of black. So quite a lot I like to do. Um, I like to do windows in kind of solid black. It's oh of course oh no yeah I do have an example there. So like these windows are just in solid black. So sometimes it's just nice to use the brush pen because it's just quicker to fill in those um, blocks of um, black. Uh, and, but what I really love sketching with are fountain pens. So I do have a video from a little while ago, which is a bit, um, bit rough on the production. Sorry about that. Mind you, this one's probably not that much better. Um, but where I received these two fountain pens and I got quite excited um, because I turned up again here in South Africa without too much of my stuff and one of the things I really love sketching with is a fountain pen. So I got this Lamy All Star um, in this kind of nice coppery bronze colour and I got this Twasabi Eco fountain pen, which I actually really particularly love. I thought I'd have a go with a different brand because I'd only used Lamy before. 
but yeah, I'm really loving this Twisabi Eco Pen, especially because the actual converter, you don't need a separate one. This doesn't take cartridges, so the whole pen is actually a converter, so you just suck up the ink with, you know, with the pen itself. And so I kind of like that, it's just a bit more, um, one less part to worry about, you know, but with the Lamy, you have to buy a separate converter so that you can suck up the ink um, from a bottle, but it does take cartridges, maybe you prefer that, so. Anyway, uh, both extra fine nibs, but both they're both different thicknesses, I guess, because there isn't, you know, like a consistent standard between nibs and apparently, um, you know, more Japanese or Asian pens will have finer nibs than like the German made fountain pens, apparently. I think it's something to do with the calligraphy and stuff like that. But, um, but either way, it's nice to have them both. Um, and I actually fill them with, let me just see if I can find this. Um, I was not prepared earlier. Um, but I actually fill them with this platinum carbon ink, um, which I really love. Um, it's permanent ink, it's waterproof. Um, a lot of people will tell you you can't put permanent ink, permanent waterproof ink in fountain pens because it will block them up, but you can. Um, I'm told other brands do block the pens more so than this platinum carbon ink. So you can get this off Amazon. Uh, I think it's about 15 quid for the bottle, but it will last a long time. So um, yeah, that's that's my preferred ink. Um, and then I guess, oh, the final, the final thing. Sometimes I like to add a touch of white highlights every now and again. Um, so I can do that with a, a white gel pen. This one is a Uniball Signo, but test them out in the shop, find which one you prefer. Or there's a Posca um, paint marker. Those are quite good, but this one's a bit, this one's a bit thick, so it's okay for like wider areas. Um, and then also there's white gouache as well, which is kind of like opaque watercolor. So this is really handy. Um, I think if you look at my video of uh, sketching a street scene, um, you'll see that I forgot to paint like the colorful um, flags. Um, and so I think I mentioned that and that I mixed my watercolor with this opaque white. And it means that I can just paint those few last few details on top of the sketch. So I actually kind of saved it. But also um, really cool to water down and just splatter on your painting a bit um, to get that kind of sea seascape um, ocean vibe. I do that on some of my boat pictures um, or any kind of ocean pictures. It kind of um, yeah, I don't know, just makes it pop a little bit. Use sparingly, but like some opaque white can really help things pop. Um, the final thing I'll mention, which I don't really use these too much, but I've started to just because I've got them, are some Tombow markers. And the reason I got these are because of Ian Fennelly. I was supposed to go to Germany in August. It's August now. I should be in Germany right now um, taking his workshop. I'm not even sure if it's still on actually, but I had to cancel anyway because um, I can't currently travel internationally because the borders are closed here. But um, Ian Fennelly is a big fan of using Tombow markers um, in his sketches and sort of blending them with watercolor and whatnot. So I do occasionally um, play with those, but they're, to be honest, they're not something I would actually take out, out, out urban sketching with me. Um, but they're, they're here to kind of play with. And if at some point I decide that they're super invaluable, then um, maybe I will. I think they would be cool actually to take out um, if you're trying to do like a very limited supplies or limited palette type challenge with yourself and just go out with a notebook, a black fine line pen and, and some gray markers. I think that would be really cool actually. So watch this space. I might, I might actually do that at some point. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it guys for my um, urban sketching supplies. Um, very recently I have got this contraption, which again, you might have seen on a previous video, but it basically holds the phone here and it clips onto the edge of like a table or something like that. And there's this light thing here. Um, but it's been really good to um, try to record a few urban sketching videos where I'm like sat in a restaurant or a pub or whatever, and um, I'm sat at a table. So I am able to um, attach this to the side of a table or whatever so I can actually film some of my sketches. So 
I don't know if that's useful information to some of you guys wondering how to film. It's not perfect because you obviously need like a table surface or something to to clip um, this onto. Or like a heavy book really works, but um, I'm still refining how how to go about sketching, filming and sketching on location in like, um, you know, the best way possible. Um, so anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, it's been kind of nice to actually talk to the camera and talk to you guys. Um, and if you have any questions at all about urban sketching, urban sketching supplies, urban sketching techniques, or anything to do with sketching, if I can help you, I will help you. Um, check out the details in, in the description below for links to any of this stuff. Um, it will be Amazon links probably, and it will be an affiliate link, which means I probably get 50 cents if you buy something. Um, but also, I'm sure all of this stuff is available in your local art supply store as well, so support those guys too. Um, do check out the book, and do check out my website. Okay, thanks for watching guys, and I shall see you in the next video. Okay, bye.